Amen. We're going right on into the Word of God, and we're going to begin in the Gospel of John, uh, chapter 14, and then we're going to hit a couple other passages from there. Amen? Amen. John 14. Amen. Amen. I thank God for the readers and the note takers. Don't get so caught up in taking notes that I don't see your eyeballs every now and then. Amen. Because it looks like you're doing something else. <laughs> That's what makes a teacher walk over to your desk and look at you to see what you're really doing. <laughs> look like you're doing something else. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. John 14 is where we are. Thank God for everybody. I honor everybody. John 14, I'm going to read verses 1, and I'm going to ask that we read verses um, 1 through 4. Amen. John chapter 14, we're going to read verses 1 through 4. May we, and it's up on the screen, so if you want to read along, may we read together. Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way ye know. Amen? amen. Thank God for his word. Amen. Now we're in this amen series within a series, the major series, the, the overarching series is, is entitled The Sovereignty of God. And we're in another mini-series within that series, and that mini-series is entitled Sufficiency in God's Sovereignty. Sufficiency in God's Sovereignty. Amen. And this is the seventh installment in this mini-series. Amen? Amen. Amen. I'm not going to go through them all today. Amen. Maybe another day. But uh, this is the seventh installment. Amen. Uh, uh, we're going to uh, circle our thoughts today around this subject. All the way. All the way. All the way. Amen. Now, if this were being preached a few decades ago when I was growing up, uh, people would be very ready to receive it. Because we heard more then about our destination. Amen. We heard more then about heaven, about wanting to go to heaven about getting ready to go to heaven. Amen. We heard more then about by and by, when the morning comes. We heard songs like Just Over in the Glory Land. Uh, we, we, we heard, <laughs> yeah, we, we heard uh, so many songs, Beulah Land. countless uh, things that pointed us toward our destiny. Uh, in the interim, uh, the gospel has gotten, well, it was always full, but the preaching got fuller. Amen. And um, uh, we started hearing more about um, the nuts and bolts of what it takes to live this life. Amen. But then the pendulum swung too far. And we started hearing stuff about 
um, just things. J just tell him the things you want. Don't, don't, don't think about heaven. Don't, don't think about heaven. Just amen. Some, some, some people who were supposed to be, uh, have some theological perspective said stuff like heaven or hell is whatever you make it on earth. So if you want a mansion, you better try to get it now. Amen. And whatever you want, you better try to get it now. Because we don't, you know, so it, it got all the way over here where we church folk got obsessed with things. And and here we are decades from that time when I was a child. And we are still contending. Uh, we're, 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 we are, we have made great strides to swing back here, uh, to a place of a reasonable understanding of the gospel where we have a spec perspective toward what is to come, but where the gospel also speaks to where we are in our everyday life. But there are still too many of us stuck over here. Where the only way we know God is good is if he given us something. If it, the only way we affirm his goodness is if he is, is satisfying what we want. God is, you can't pimp God. And you can't prostitute him. Can't use him for what we want and then hang him back up till we want something else. That is not the gospel. Are, are we communicating? Amen. Amen. So, so when we talk about the sovereignty of God, amen, we've got to address the reality that the sovereignty of God covers us all the way from earth to glory all the way and to settle for anything less is to settle for getting shorted in the gospel amen amen it's gotten so bad to really there are people who go to church who there are churches that are founded on the belief that there is no heaven or hell. Their churches call themselves Christian churches. Amen. It's, it's, it's awful. But the sovereignty of God is that Christian teaching that God is the supreme authority. Amen. And that all things are under his control. Amen. God is the supreme authority. And all things are under his control. Now, the Protestant expression of this and the Catholic expression of this may be slightly different. Amen. But from the Westminster Confession, amen, amen, I'm going to share with you just a little of the Protestant view on this. Amen. God, from all eternity, boy, that's enough to faint on right there. From all eternity did by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will. Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. God, let me, let me read it. God from, the, from eternity, from all eternity did by the most wise and holy counsel of his own will freely and unchangeably ordain whatever comes to pass. Now we can, we can do that 
when there's stuff going our way. But what we got to do is learn how to trust God when it gets kind of thick. We got to learn how to trust God when things aren't going our way and when it looks like the enemy is gaining some ground, we still got to all the more affirm our trust in the sovereignty of God. And the sovereignty of God means I've got to be ready to say now, nah, I ain't hitting no much right now. Amen. But the old saints had it, y'all. They had it. The old saints said, I got a feeling that everything going to be all right. Y'all hear what? The oh, my, 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 my. Oh, my God. So God is sovereign. God is sovereign in creation. Amen. He ain't called nobody to help him create. He just created. God is sovereign in creation. Are we communicating? Amen. So if you got problems with how you made, amen, the only one you can complain to is the maker. How about the word said I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. I might be ugly in your sight. Amen. If I'm ugly in your sight, all I can say is you must be looking out of ugly eyes. Because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Oh, man. He is, he is sovereign in providence. A leaf doesn't fall from the tree except the Lord says so. A blade of grass doesn't spring up in a dry place. Except the Lord says so. You can go fishing through your fishing hole all day long. But you ain't going to get a bite unless the Lord says. My God, my God. Prophet, he is God in providence. Everything that happens in time and eternity he's God over all of that so we ask challenging questions why did this sovereign God our sovereign God permit certain atrocities in history why did he permit the holocaust Why did he permit Christians to go about killing folk in the crusades in his name? Why did he permit millions of souls from Africa to be dispersed over the globe, not just here in the United States? Praise the Lord. All I can say is the old folk had it right again. They used to sing that song, said, Father of Love. We'll know all about it. Father of Love. We'll understand why. So what am I supposed to do in the meantime? Cheer up, my brother. Live in the sunshine. We'll understand it. Oh, by and by. Ah. So it's God over providence. Hallelujah. He's God over redemption. Hallelujah. Amen. You can't come unless he call you. Lord have mercy. Amen. He, he, amen. Lord, he, he calls us. And we respond to the calling. So it's God over redemption. I got to face the, the unpleasant truth. That some people, perhaps some people even close to me, are going to hell. Because he called them, but they won't answer. Or they have turned them 
themselves so far from him that they no longer hear his voice. He's God over redemption. He didn't send Jesus plus somebody else. Christians, y'all better get a hold of this. That's why we get all mixed up and folk can kind of bleed their, their beliefs into our beliefs. So if Jesus is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Nobody gets to our sovereign God except through Jesus Christ. There is no other way. Period. I'll lead that. I, oh, well, okay. You got a whole eternity to change your mind, but it won't change your destiny. He got over redemption. Hallelujah. And then, I see that. Our sovereign God is God over judgment. Amen. Amen. Don't you mind who tell you to go to the devil? long as it ain't God. You can get mad at me and tell me go to hell all you want. Amen. I ain't going. You can size me up and say I'm going to the devil all you want. I ain't going. Heaven is my home. Just got a green card for earth and it's going to expire one day glory to God but when my green card for earth expires don't worry about me I'm going to my native country I'm a pilgrim a sojourner traveling through this barren land we used to sing a song say I got a home in yonder city Lord I'll do the best I can hallelujah Isaiah 46 uh, it's important enough for me to turn there and read it. You don't have to turn, but I'm going to go to Isaiah 46. and I'm going to just read verse 9. Amen. Isaiah 46 and, and 9 says, Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me. Every once in a while, even in the natural, we got to let people know. Parents got to let children know, I'm, I'm the daddy. Y'all mothers have to say, I'm the mama. Look now, I, I can listen to what you say, but when, when push come to shove, you need to know I'm the neighbor. Nigga James Smalls used to say, Abel, what a call a pulse in this house. Oh my God. He said, I'm God by myself. I don't need to call in your gods, your created gods. Y'all got lonely and created a God. I got lonely and created you. I don't need your God. Ooh, boy, oh boy, this thing is mm -mm good right here. Yeah, are we communicating? He says, I am God. Amen. Amen. There is none else. I am God. There is none like me. Amen. 
Amen. And whenever you find anybody who seeks to seduce you away from your God, then you know that that's, that's from where? Okay. Because the devil, the God ain't going to seduce you away from himself. But if, he, if there's a lure away from the only one, then that has to be the work of the enemy. And just remember that he was created just like me and you. The, the devil ain't God's alter ego. He an angel, a fallen angel, who's been given limited power no authority but limited power to affect the will of sovereign God. The devil doesn't even realize he's on contract. He got to do what That's why when he inquired about Job he said now nah, you can mess with him but don't touch it. Now nah, look here. I'm going to let you go so far, but you can't go no further. <laughs> Nobody but the owner can say that. Huh? Oh, my God. Now, let's check out 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. Again, you can make a note of it, but you don't have to necessarily turn there. I'm going to get there and read it for you. Just a moment. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 19. And the word of God reads, If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If your hope in Christ is limited to the car, or to the house, or to the six-figure salary, or to the dazzling wardrobe. If that's all you need him for, you are of all men most miserable. Now check it out. Ain't nothing wrong with the house. Ain't nothing wrong with the cars. Ain't nothing wrong with the clothes. But when they become the essence of why we call on God. Hallelujah. Our sovereign God says my plan is to take you all the way. I ain't going to just get you in a house down here. Ooh. enjoy that house but don't get hung up on it cause I see cause Jesus said I am going to prepare a place for you that means this thing I got on earth ain't my final destination stay with God Stay with God. God's sovereignty is sufficient. It's sufficient for healing my body. That's in time. It's sufficient for regulating my mind. Amen. It's sufficient for soothing my heart. It's sufficient for restoring my peace. When my world is mixed up, God's Sovereignty is sufficient on my dying bed. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Yeah, if nobody else hold my hand, Jesus right there holding my hand. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So his sovereignty is sufficient for all of time. Amen. His sovereignty is sufficient for my health, 
for my well-being, for living, for food, for clothing, for prosperity, for my family, for spouse, for children, for grandchildren. His, his sovereignty is sufficient for all of that. But my greatest hope for, for God's sovereignty is in my future. Amen. Listen, my greatest hope, and I pray it is yours too, for God's sovereignty is in our future. Beyond how the sovereignty of God blesses us in time, and more gratifying to anticipate is the sovereignty of God in my eternity. Amen. So the promise of God is, amen. The promise of God, amen. You got to want more than what you got. <laughs> you got to want that home that the old saints used to say, ain't built with hammer nor nail. Yeah, you, you got to want that thing. You got to be able to visualize that thing. You got to be able to behold the mansion that's being prepared for you. Amen. Amen. God says, in my sovereignty, I have made a plan. Here is the plan. We read the plan a little earlier. Amen. I'll read it again. Jesus says, uh, 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 let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say, in my father's house. Hallelujah. Are many mansions, are many rooms. In other words, I got accommodations. If it were not so, I would have told you. Yeah, now a lot of people when they read that, they insert, I would not have told you. Don't ever do that. That's not what that scripture says. It says, I, if it weren't so, I would have told you it wasn't so. Amen. Then he says, I go to prepare a place for you. I'm, I'm fixing your room up. And my imagination <laughs> suggests to me that he knows what we like. So he's going to put something in your room that is appealing to you. If you like nice, quiet, serene scenes, if you like to see rapids running down the sides of mountains. If you like to see water, I believe he's fixing it up just for. If you love to see little children, I believe he's going to have some little children painted on the wall for you. He said, I am. <laughs> he, ain't, he ain't really going to build the mansion because he said his father already has the mansions he's just going to personalize it <sighs> hallelujah and uh I will come again. I, I will come again. 14, 44, 64, 84, 94, 104. I will come again. And when I come, I am going to receive you unto myself. Glory to God. So that where I am. And I know he's at.
at the right hand of the Father. I know he's in heaven. So he says, so that where I am, there you may be also. And whither I go, you know, in the way you know. Thomas, in his ignorance, said, we don't know where you're going. How can we know the way? Jesus said, just follow my voice, Thomas. Just follow my voice. Just, just keep, I'm going to keep talking, and you keep following my voice. And if I go through a valley, you come on through the valley. And if I go over a mountain, you come on over the mountain. It doesn't matter where I take. Oh, just follow my voice, Thomas. I am the way. I'm the only way for you to get all the way. I'm the only way. Follow my voice. Follow my voice. Read my voice in the word. Follow my voice through anointed music I send. Follow my voice. Through instructions from teachers I will give you. Follow my voice. If you just follow my voice. You will get home one day. Just follow my voice. Follow my voice and one day you'll be able to say I made it. I made it. I finally made it. I, I didn't. I got. I kind of had second thoughts when I was going through the hell, but I made it. I kind of had second thoughts when sickness got in my body, but I made it. I kind of had second thoughts when my world fell apart, but I made it. I had had second thoughts when my mind got mixed up but I made it I made it I made it stay with God that's the only way to inherit the promise and then saints live like you have plans Live like God has made some plans for you. Don't live like you out here wondering, not knowing whether you're going or coming, not knowing who is going to lead you where you're going. God gave you plans. Live like you got some plans. Sooner or later. gonna make it home that's part of the sovereignty of God I'm gonna take you all the way I'm gonna take you all the way yeah you're going through some stuff but I'm taking you all the way you may even wonder sometimes if I've deserted you but I'm gonna take you all the way all the way the 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 footprints the um, poem says yeah that, that's when it was just one set of footprints so don't don't you dare think that I left you when at your worst times yeah I picked you up you were grown but I carried you like a baby because you my baby all the way so enjoy the blessings of God regarding sovereignty and time. But don't get obsessed with that. Because that's not the full story. And it can be perverted to the point where we ignore the truth that this earth is not our home. This world ain't our home, baby. We got to get out of here. Enjoy it. Live as best you can, as long as you can. But don't get a hold of nothing down here 
you ain't ready to give up for the greater thing that is ahead of you. I'm telling you, I thank God for everything I got. But when he calls me, goodbye world. I'm gone. Y'all hear what I'm saying? I am gone. I don't care about nothing. I don't care about nothing. Do what you want to do. Burn it down. I don't care. I'm gone. Thank you, Lord, for looking out for us when we didn't look out for ourselves. Yeah, when we get there, our folk used to have some exciting songs about what we're going to do in heaven. I know we're going to praise him. I know we're going to celebrate his sovereignty. And I know we're going to celebrate the victory we have accomplished in him. Hallelujah. Enjoy life. I'm telling anybody not to enjoy life. But don't get hung up on this stuff here. It's all valuable in time only. But the sovereignty of God. Jesus said, I'm going to prepare. Oh man, to be thought of so. Most of us exist in situations where, where what you want might not be a priority for many folk. But Jesus said, I'm going. I know you. I know your likes, your dislikes. I know you don't like chartreuse. I know you don't like hot pink. So that ain't going to be in your room. Ooh. I know you like horses. Might have one of them running across the wall. I'm both a parent so you can be at your most peaceful place. I can even have water running and fall off, water falling in your room. It'll help you enjoy peace more. I can do what I want to do. And that's when we will put on the robe he gives us. And celebrate that we made it over. We made it over. That we didn't lose, we won. Hallelujah. Now, all that being said, don't you want to join that number? When I was little, in the days of singing usher boards, <laughs> we used to sing a song that, come on, join that number. That no man can number. Come on, join that number. Let's go home. It's a holy and a righteous number. That no man can number. Come on, join that number. Let's go home. Don't you want to join that number? So I ask you today, don't you? Don't you want to join that number? that no man can number. And I invite you, come on. Join that number. Let's go home. Come on. You got to join the number if you want to go home. Come on. Join the number. We, 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 we headed somewhere. I know it might look like we ain't going nowhere, but we headed somewhere. 
come on, I invite you to come on. Let's go all the way. All the way. If you need to be saved, I beg, I implore, please, please, you've got to join that number. You've got to confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. You've got to believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. And I'm telling you, if you do that, you can join that number that no man can number. Come on. <laughs> Join that number. Let's go home. If you're backslidden, you joined the number, but you got distracted. The devil dangled something in your face. And you quit pursuing the passion of getting home then I invite you back. The Lord is reclaiming today. He's reclaiming. He's still working on that place for you, you see. Yeah, he ain't got, well, if he doesn't show up, he's still working on that place for you. Come on back. Let's go home. <clears throat> if you're trying to Get all the way to heaven without the power of the Holy Ghost. Come on. Ask the Lord for the indwelling, for the filling of the Holy Ghost. With the powerful evidence of a language of heaven. A language you never studied. Come on, join that number. Let's go home. If you've been floating around and you've not planted yourself anywhere for whatever reason, whatever reason, then I invite you, come on, come on, hear the Lord lead you where he wants you to be. Join that number. You're not pleasing him right now. You're in rebellion right now. He's not going to accept your criticisms of everybody else. You, you're going to have to tell him why you disobeyed him. Come on, join that number. Then, if you just need a home and you desire to affiliate with this branch of Zion on Christian experience which means you did make that confession seriously before the Lord or by letter from another assembly or whatever then let us know come on though come on tell somebody today if it's just somebody in your house you tell somebody today the Lord told me do this you make it known today contact one of us that we may do that we may serve you Glory to God. We're going to pray now. Ask if you would please at the appropriate time just pray what is relevant for you. Meet it in your heart. He's going to take you all the way if you give him a chance. We ask those who are here and those who are at home no, wherever you may be to pray along hallelujah in the name of Jesus heavenly father in the name of Jesus we come hear our prayer incline your ear toward us grant us your peace father I am the one who needs to be saved I've heard about you, but today I heard you calling my name. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord. I believe in my heart 
that you raised Jesus from the dead. I submit myself to your lordship, to your sovereignty. I yield my will. Take me. Mold me. Make me who you want me to be. I thank you that I realize that there is no hope outside of you. There is no way to get to you except through Jesus. So I come. Thank you for the blood of Jesus shed at Calvary for my sins. I receive it as payment for my sins and I receive the righteousness secured for me at Calvary. O Lamb of God, I come. That's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who needs to come back home. No excuses. I can explain all day long. I can blame all day long. But the decision to go away was all mine. I repent. I made a bad move. I followed a bad road. But thank you for letting me live so that I can come today repent and ask you to receive me and restore me again. I never forgot about you. I felt so ashamed. I felt so unworthy. But I hear you calling my name. I hear you calling my name. O oh, Lamb of God, I come in Jesus' name. That's me. Heavenly Father, I'm the one who needs a church home. I've given my life to you. Jesus is Lord of my life. But I'm not settled anywhere. So whether on Christian experience, by letter, however I may be received, I yield to your will. I come on, Lord, into the house you've sent me to. Thank you, Lord, for not letting me die in the wilderness. Thank you, Lord, for keeping me until I could obey you. Oh God, I thank you so much for allowing this to happen in my life today. If I've been overly critical, if I've been pointing the finger a lot, forgive me. It's me. It's me. It's me, oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. In Jesus' name. O oh, Lamb of God, I come. That's me. Heavenly Father, I am the one who needs to know you, who wants to know you in your fullness. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with the precious Holy Ghost, fill me until I know I'm new through and through. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to keep asking. I'm going to keep believing. I'll divorce myself from distractions so that I can hear only you until I receive this gift you have planned for my life. 
Oh, Lamb of God, I come in Jesus' name. That's me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God, we're believing all over your earth that lives are changed right now. We're believing all over your earth, Lord, that you've saved and that you've reclaimed, that you've filled, God. Now, God, bless the saints who are weary. Bless saints who are just overtaxed right now. Lord, bless those who are standing in the gap for children and other relatives, Lord, those who are bearing burdens they never planned to bear. Oh, God, strengthen them right now, God. In the name of Jesus. They can't do this in the natural, God. They need your super on top of that natural, God. They need a power that is not of this earth, God. To strengthen them to do this thing in this season, God. Oh God, when they get weary, quicken them, God. In the name of Jesus. When they get weary, quicken them, God. In the name of Jesus. I say again, God, when they get weary, quicken them, God. In the name of Jesus, provide for them, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, your people are suffering. It's not just those who are financially poor. Many of, of your people have money, but we're suffering in other ways. Oh, hear your cry to hear our cry today, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, we don't know but that you have allowed in your sovereignty this season because you want more communion with us you want more fellowship with us you just don't want membership God you want fellowship you really want to know that we know you as sovereign of our lives oh help us Lord help us Lord where we're weak give us strength where conditions have torn us down build us back up have your way now bless our elders bless those who are trying to make a living every day bless those who are looking to you for all their help God and bless the children God in the name of Jesus Lord I pray you would continue to speak to those who are governing us whether they obey you or not speak to them Lord Speak to them, Lord. Oh, God, we can't do nothing till you come. Have your way now, God. That's not a, that's not a resi resignation unto helplessness. That's our statement of faith. We can't do anything until you come, God. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's bless God for what he has done.